we also are mindful that if we have no accomplishments, we have no distinguished deeds to relate, we are reluctant to make things up. Because even when you name a child, you don't make a, make a name to make it sound pretty. The important thing in giving a name among the crow is that it's the truth. You tell the truth and then we say, we address the creator and we say, grandfather, son, you looked right down on me when that happened. So you're my witness that it was the truth. So I give this name to that thing, not because I'm a great warrior, not because I'm a great, a great athlete or great anything, but by the grace of the good fortune that you gave me, I was fortunate to have that, that one time. So you name somebody after something you did that's very distinctive. I named this young man, Lanny Reelberg. And I said his, his work is distinguished. He's known all over for his work. The reason I did that is I was fortunate, not because I was anything, but I became Assistant Secretary of the Interior. And when I was given that job, I was at the highest post that any Indian had ever assumed ever since Cato Sells as Commissioner of Indian Affairs. I was an Assistant Secretary. And when that happened back in the 1963, I was fortunate. I was also given a Distinguished Service Cross as the highest civilian award and I took this young man when he was a little fellow, just knee high, and I stood under the sun and I said, old man grandfather, you were the witness. I was fortunate to have a job that was known all over the United States because it was in the congressional record, it was in the newspapers all over. He's the highest appointed Indian. So his, this young man's name is, his work is distinguished. He's an outstanding worker. So that does not say that I'm great, but I was fortunate. So given that, we give those names and we don't brag. And in, in spite of, because of that, and in spite of all the other considerations, our students are reluctant to talk sometimes. Sometimes when they're being honored for accomplishing something in school, they say, I didn't do anything. Somebody talk for me. So they'll come to somebody else who has distinguished himself, and he'll say, I'll tell the story for him for her, for him or her, with the hope that someday that she'll have their own story to tell so that she can talk publicly without bragging and that she'll do it by the grace of a greater power. So we know those things. So when you ask somebody to tell your story, to tell, make a presentation and they're reluctant, please keep that in mind. It goes back to the idea you don't brag, you've not been given the right to do it, or you don't feel that you're distinguished enough to go ahead and make these announcements and say, I'm a good student, I did this, I did that, and I'm going to do this. And we, we characterize white people as saying, saying things that they can't even do. They say, I'm going to be the greatest thing, I'm going to be the president. We don't do that. We do it humbly. We do it in our own way. And then we tell ourselves, be twice as good as that white man, otherwise you're not as equal.